All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this edition of uh, Trigger Charts Friday Morning Pre-Market Rundown. I'm your host, Kevin Hoffman, here. Um, just a quick disclosure first before we get going. Investing involves substantial risk. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results, and a loss of original capital may occur. Please consider this for educational use only, and as always, use your best judgment when investing. Well, good morning, everyone. I am... Uh, Back at the desk after a, uh, a little bit of uh, some time away. I've been out of the loop, so uh, you might have to catch me up. But uh, had twin boys um, December 3rd, so took a little bit of time off, but now I'm back. So I uh, can't believe some of the stuff that I'm seeing with, uh, with Reddit and GameStop and AMC. Uh, what's next? Blockbuster? I don't get it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's some crazy stuff. We did have um, Carson Block from Muddy Waters Research on our podcast, the Discipline Investor Podcast. If you guys don't listen to that, it's uh, it's definitely worth checking out. But he was on about two weeks ago, and uh, I believe he seemed to think that it was, um, you know, in addition to Reddit, also uh, some hedge funds attacking other hedge funds. So something to consider uh, going forward here uh, if you start seeing some of these highly shorted stocks uh, getting um, gone after. Anyway... Let's move forward here. As far as the economic data this morning, some really interesting news here where we saw non-farm payrolls coming out. Um, <clears throat> they were looking for only 182,000, but came out at 379,000. Pretty impressive jump there in uh, unemployment numbers, which may mean that uh, people are getting back to work a lot quicker than expected. Uh, seems that Texas is starting to uh, remove their uh, their mask mandates and their restrictions on uh, on various different uh, COVID COVID things. So uh, maybe restaurants are starting to rehire retail, etc. Rate was forecasted at six point three percent, came in at six point two. That's better, but we still want to stay closer. Um, I guess pay more attention to the U six rate, which is at eleven point six percent, because. Many of the people who are out due to COVID still aren't coming back to work uh, and aren't currently looking for work as they're staying on unemployment packages and uh, stimulus efforts uh, that we've seen come through from both the Trump administration and also there should be uh, potentially a $1.9 trillion uh, deal coming through maybe over this weekend. So. We'll see what happens, but uh, that, that'll be big news for the markets. As you can see, this market's this morning up a little bit on the, the non-farm payroll news after uh, a pretty brutal uh, week this week, but uh, we'll take a look at that in the next uh, next few minutes. Labor force participation rate was 61.4%. Pre-pandemic, we were seeing around 63.5%, so that's a <clears throat> pretty big difference uh, there. And it's been steadily on the decline uh, since uh, 2000, and that was around 67%. We'll see consumer credit later on in the day, and we're looking for uh, $12 billion at 3 p.m. Themes, they continue to be rates, uh, whether it be longer-term rates and shorter-term rates, as we saw uh, from Powell yesterday uh, discussing this. But we'll, we'll go through some of his remarks uh, uh, later on. Inflation, got to be watching these commodities. Um, another great uh, theme that we're seeing is this value over growth and this reflation trade or this rotation. Uh, seeing a lot of the big institutions looking at selling some of these tech companies as uh, potentially some of them are overvalued and looking at buying banks and energy stocks. Um, as we discussed, that fiscal stimulus package is coming. Um, there was some vaccine news from Biden about two days ago where he um, said that every adult should be able to have a vaccine should they want it by the end of May. We'll see if that comes to fruition as that would be uh, fairly interesting. We'll talk about Powell's comments. We'll check in on some of these indices, especially looking at uh, treasuries and the VIX and the dollar index. And the real, real big question is, you know, this big dip here that we've seen, especially in, in the NASDAQ, um, Will that uh, will that buy the dip, uh, you know, continue uh, to prevail? Um, and then we'll also talk about these Momo stocks that kind of signaled uh, this this downturn. Other than Treasuries, which were the, the the main signal, as you can see on the right hand side here, this is a this is a ten year Treasury chart. This is the yield on the ten year Treasury. So as you guys know, as yields go up, prices go down. Um, so um, 
we've seen the uh, the Treasury yield jump from around 80 basis points all the way up to uh, 1.6%, which is a rather large move and something that um, that uh, uh, Powell may not uh, be uh, be happy about, considering they've been trying to keep rates at, at a pretty low level. We'll talk about some of the earnings that came out this week, as well as earnings next week. But let's jump right to it, and uh, let's take a look at um, inflation. We've been watching some of these commodities, specifically oil, has been on a nice little run here. This is the, the ETF USO, but we've seen it go from about this $25 uh, level all the way up to 43. So that's a, a pretty uh, substantial move there on uh, on USO. Natural gas, not so much. Uh, while it's been a pretty decent uh, or decently cold winter and a snowy winter, at least as far as in the Midwest goes, uh, natural gas still hasn't really caught in the boot caught the boost that um, that oil has seen. Let's see what we're on here. Since I've been out of the loop, you guys are going to have to give me a little bit of time here. But it looks like we're on a 30-minute chart on the left-hand side here and a daily on the right. So you can see this kind of long-term trend up <clears throat> on USO um, with a little bit of a breakout today. Uh, I guess that was yesterday on the inflation comments uh, from Powell. Gold and silver, however, um, have not been on this reflation trade or inflation trade uh, so far. But it's something to, to continue to watch in the future. We had a good little consolidation area here. It looks like we've marked in the past with a breakout. Now we're moving back down to this, this 23 half uh, level here on silver, which could be a decent buying point. Let's take a look at the radar, if we can turn that on here. Uh, there we go. So we broke this high volume node area around 25 next stop looks to be uh around here this 23 half 23 and a quarter level and then uh down to 22 and a half so some really really good support here on silver i'd continue to watch this one um for a trend higher uh if we can find support at those levels but seems to be a, a lot of volume at uh, at price in in those particular areas <clears throat> Any other commodities you guys would like me to look at? Please type them in. Um, I'll move on uh, to the next stuff until we, um, unless I see something from you guys. But um, one of the other big themes that we're seeing, and the newest theme on the menu, is this rotation out of tech and into some of the reflation type areas, which would be like energy stocks, bank stocks. Um, we've seen XLK. XLK is the uh, the technology ETF. As you can see on this 30-minute chart, pretty substantial down volume or pretty substantial down on price here. And uh, you can see it on the daily. But for the year, year to date, this XLK, at least as of yesterday, was down 0.46%, whereas we're seeing energy XLE up about 31.5% year to date. And even the banks, XLF, which have lagged quite a bit over the last, uh, I guess, several several years, you know, start to make this comeback here um, after that uh, that COVID drop. <clears throat> but it's up 13.5% so far year to date. So you can see this kind of rotation. Even more so, we can see this rotation in, uh, in value over growth. Uh, growth has been absolutely phenomenal for it must be 10, 12 plus years now. And uh, everybody's starting to think that this year will be the year that value will take over growth. So far in the large cap space, we're seeing a 6.74% on large cap value, negative 2.22%. Uh, so a spread of about 8.9% on, uh, on large value over growth. It's even more substantial when you look at mid caps. Mid caps uh, we're seeing a, a spread of about 10.5% on uh, value versus growth. And small value or small caps, we're seeing about a 12% spread on, uh, on value over growth. So <clears throat> just kind of taking a look at this, uh, we can take a look at IWN, which is the small cap uh, value Russell ETF. You can see this kind of trend higher on it. 
um, and it's up 18.11% year to date, whereas the value or the growth, I'm sorry, is, uh, you know, you see this, this short term trend down here on it. And while it's still up for the year at 6.14%, uh, it's still lagging the, the value indicator quite substantially. So something to watch going forward as this, uh, this value over growth trade kind of, um, uh, kind of develops. Um, vaccine news. Uh, this may affect some of these companies like Johnson & Johnson. Uh, we saw them come out with theirs and it get approval. Pfizer, which, you know, really, uh, BioNTech may be the, the, the bigger, um, uh, get more uh, money out of this than, than Pfizer will, even though they're the, they're the front man or the front name. And Moderna, obviously uh, has done quite a good job in, in getting their vaccine out and distributed rather well. So you may see some, uh, some buy, the dip act, buy the dip action here. Uh, we can take a look maybe at their, uh, their radar and see that, you know, you can probably see a next stop here around 116 or so. Kind of an, a decent gap here. But this is going to be a volatile stock uh, depending on how quickly they can get their vaccine out and, and how well it's adopted. But down to 116, uh, you have some pretty good support there. All right, so yesterday we had Powell come out and really kind of put a cold handshake on the market. So some of his comments yesterday were trying to make sense of, of, of what's been happening this week. And, and realistically, you know, some of the things he talked about is that he doesn't seem to really care too much about this, uh, this long-term or even short-term rate uh, increase on, uh, on some of these um, – on these 30 years, 10 years, and five years. But here's kind of a, a 30 year chart that we're seeing this move up from somewhere around 1.2% all the way up to 2.3% on the 30 year, which a lot of mortgages are based off of. And then the 10 year, obviously up at 1.6% from 60 basis points. And even your five year notes, substantially large jump here. Um, from around 30 basis points back in October, all the way up to 85 or so basis points going forward. However, short-term rates, you know, your money markets aren't going to be going up anytime soon as those are still strapped pretty far low. Um, I know at least at, at Schwab and a few other uh, uh, money market places, still only seeing about payments of 10 basis points, 15 basis points, you know, pretty minimal. But... <clears throat> Powell seems to think that inflation is going to going to pick up, and uh, potentially a surge in spending, especially since we're seeing a lot of monetary and fiscal stimulus that's come through uh, with the second package or even third package that's uh, that's out there. The question is is whether or not that's going to be kind of transitory, which means you know is is it kind of uh, long term or is it just a big bump quick and then back down. Um, he doesn't seem to think that disinflationary pressures are going to go anywhere, go away anytime soon. So I think that's why he's trying to keep these rates at a low, low amount for a, a longer period of time. Um, really, though, he's concerned about um, um, on, on what they're going to do as far as with rates go and if they'll ever, you know, kind of pull off the gas pedal here. But he thinks presumably in the next few months we're going to see strong employment and their current policy stance is appropriate. He said the lesson from COVID is to attack quickly and don't hold back. And the second lesson is to don't stop until the job is really done. So I don't think we're going to see any kind of um, rate increases or, or uh, uh, decreasing of bond buying from the Fed anytime soon. And they're really going to probably communicate pretty well when they're going to do that because typically they're not looking at surprising people and uh and and they'll be looking to communicate that <clears throat> as far as unemployment rates um powell said basically four percent would be a nice unemployment rate to get to but they think it's going to take a lot more than maximum employment before they before they do anything 
Let's check in on some of these index levels and see if this buy the dip it, it will prevail here. We can see now that the NASDAQ has jumped back up about 1% after being uh, only up about a half a percent after the unemployment numbers. So let's take a look at some of these index levels and see you know, where some support points might be. Um, pretty interesting here that we saw us get pretty close to this this lower altimeter level here at 370 on the SPY. We'll probably see it even better on this radar here <clears throat> that we have a lot of support in here between 368 and 370. So we can probably use that as a good support point, um, our first level of, of support. But if we start to see further downside, um, we could probably see a drop down to here to 356 or so on the daily. As you can see, our Aileron is kind of signaling um, a reversal of trend, which we've seen you know, short term um, over the past 10 or 14 days or so, um, a skew toward the downside. However, you know, this market, considering fiscal and uh, monetary stimulus, has been a buy the dip mode uh, pretty much no matter what. NASDAQ 100 has probably been the weakest as you see, we went from, let's see here, about 340 down to about 300. So a little over 11, 12% decline there. And we've seen even some of the, the, the internals of, uh, of some of these positions move down, you know, anywhere 30, 40, 50% uh, on some of these Momo stocks that we'll take a look at later on that, uh, that got crushed pretty well. <clears throat> In the Russell, we kind of looked at the value over growth, but again, at this first support point, but not a lot of volume here on the daily. If we were to break this, it could move down here to this 195. So, um, you know, what we kind of tell people is, you know, look to buy on that support, but if it breaks that level, you got to be quick and move out and then look for the next level of support or sell into it um, on that on that breakdown. But certainly, um, some choppy action, volatility is getting high, um, but we are seeing that bounce here. You can see that in the VIX, actually. We'll see this spike up to 30 here on the VIX. Last time we saw this was back in mid-January or so, but uh, this, this move seems to be a little bit more substantial. Dollar index starting to move up a little bit, although it's been on a downtrend for quite some time now. Um, especially considering how much how much money our government's been spending and um, and how quickly uh, the stimulus efforts have been from the uh, from the Fed. So I think there's going to be continued pressure on the dollar. But um, you know, if there were to be a crisis, everybody knows dollars always the the safe haven. So. If, if a recession should come in or if further downside should happen, uh, you may see a kind of flee, uh, fleeting moment into this, uh, this dollar index. But I think it's going to be pretty difficult to break past <clears throat> this kind of uh, consolidation level that we saw back here in this $95 to, to $93 level. Just take a quick look at emerging markets. Again, similar look to, to everything else we're seeing on a, on a daily chart. A little bit of downside with some support down here at 51. Same thing here with the MSCI EFA index. Not quite as dramatic. Had somebody ask about the, the KRI and take a look at that here. Um, KRI is pretty much at a negative one and, uh, which, which kind of means that, you know, the trend is in equilibrium, which means, um, you know, potentially we're going to stay on the same trend pattern, at least for the short term. So we did see a pretty high jump here in the KRI. This was back in February, which kind of signaled, uh, that downside that we're seeing. You can see this big cluster here. You have one, two, three, four, five, uh, where we see you know that kind of overheated level, which signaled this um, this recent kind of downturn here. So if you guys don't watch the KRI, this key reversal indicator, 
pretty cool thing that we that we built and it's only based on the SPY uh, just kind of looks at overall market trends to see um, you know if things are getting overheated or oversold um, but right now like I said we're in we're in equilibrium so it's uh, basically meaning a continued trend until we see uh, something different. Uh, moving forward, um, as I said before, Treasuries really kind of signaled that that downside. You know, you saw the, the move up on yields, which uh, wasn't is not necessarily good, um, considering we're trying to keep rates low. But other than that, Momo stocks really kind of signaled over the last week or so, I would say, um, the change in trend. Uh, it's basically the stuff that was working was no longer working. Those leaders turned into laggards, and uh, we can take a look at some of those. Let's run down this list real quick, but take a look at NVIDIA. See a large move here down from 611 down to 483. Now, if you guys are looking for some of these dip buys, you know you can take a look at the, you know, the radar here. We have a, a pretty good downside support. I mean, you could call this a you know pretty wide consolidation here. Um, you know, it's a highly volatile. Uh, position and also highly priced, but um, but yeah, some good downside support here on Nvidia. PayPal, another one, big drop. Seeing some good support down here at two thirty, which we saw kind of a bounce off of yesterday. You see this kind of candlestick. Um, downside candlestick that bounced right on this 233 level on this high volume node. If you see this yellow over here uh, from the previous radar as a, as a good support point. Netflix, another big Momo. Tesla. Just try and run through these kind of quick. See if I see anything that's that really jumps out at me. Trade Desk, Fortinet. Fortnite's been holding up rather well, actually. That's impressive. Etsy, not too much downside there. Some of these solar names have really been been beaten up. We'll take a look here at like Plug Power. It doesn't the chart doesn't look like it's too bad, but if you look at the high here, we're looking at it like a 75 half. It's down to 37. So you're talking about a 50% haircut there. But some pretty good support down here at 34, 20 or so. If you're looking at some of these um um, these alternative energy electric car type plays blink. I think another one where we've seen some pretty good downside, even though the chart doesn't look too bad, it is bad. 64 down to, uh, down to about 30. Somebody's asking for beam. I'm not sure. I know this one beam global, not familiar, but, uh, certainly see me seeing the same thing here. Uh, 75 down to 30. Have some good support down here in this uh, this twenty eight dollar range. Uh, otherwise, below that, you're probably looking for uh, downside to about sixteen or so. Elizabeth, I'll um, I'd be happy to 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 reach out to you. Um, I'll take a I'll, I'll send you an email later. Thank you for that note. F five. Another good one. Let's look at uh, 3D systems, 3D printing. Had a pretty good run this year, but now on the downside. Uh, I think we're getting into some of the, uh, the earnings from this week, which um, some of these stocks have uh, have come out with. Novavax really on the downside here, but has some support. I'm just not sure. You have to really stay on top of some of this vaccine news in order to, to, to participate in these, but certainly some support down here at 130. <clears throat> uh, some other um, earnings from this week. We saw Workhorse. This was an interesting one as um, they were supposed to get the fleet, I believe, for the U.S. Postal Service. And it ended up, I think the contract ended up going to Oshkosh Trucking, which... Is that OSK? Yeah. So here's Oshkosh Trucking, which will actually did receive the contract, and then it was disputed um, in the Senate. So it, we're going to see some volatility here from both 
Oshkosh. Not so much Oshkosh because they're a pretty well-established company, but this would certainly be a decent contract for them. But Workhorse would certainly uh, benefit a lot more because they're, uh, you know, lower, uh, not as established company as as were as uh, Oshkosh is. But certainly seeing maybe a little bit of support here, but this is a tough one because if they don't get that contract, um, you know, they're they're kind of back to square one here. They did come out with earnings, which is uh, why we may have seen some downside here, but uh, some of that downside was more likely on that news of, of Oshkosh winning that uh, that contract. Uh, Zoom, which what we're using today, came out with, with earnings. They've had a pretty decent run, but uh, now that people are getting back to work potentially, uh, may not see as, as, as big a growth. I did see the other day, it was an interesting, uh, I think it was like the top top 20 websites visited. Uh, you know, obviously Google number one, Amazon in there. But Zoom Media or uh, uh, Zoom uh, video was, uh, was I think, number 20. So pretty impressive um, run that they've had here in, the, in, in these times of COVID. Just a matter of whether they can uh, keep con- continue to expand their business um, with, with many people getting back to work and going back into the office. Costco, another one, came out with earnings. Been on the downside here, but obviously going to be a play if more fiscal stimulus comes into the market. Um, as it sounds like everybody's going to get around a $1,400 check, or I'm sorry, not everybody. Most, uh, many Americans, I should say, uh, will get that $1,400 check. Um, but certainly some good support here after this consolidation zone that we've seen. Right here in this $310 level. Otherwise, we're going to see some support down at 290. So um, if you think that, you know, this money that's going to be coming into the pockets of Americans at uh, the $1,400, Costco is going to win it. I would bet more on Amazon if that were me. But that was basically that that first round of uh, stimulus was basically an Amazon gift card. What else came out for earnings? Let's take a look here. Kroger, an interesting one. Grocery chain starting to break out here on the high side, but uh, I believe the stock pays a dividend. It's going to be kind of a slow mover. Uh, What else was there? Target. A lot of retail companies this week. Any other stocks that you guys have? I think I see one from Robert here. MGNI. Let's take a look here. What's MGNI? Magnite Inc. That's a great look here on uh, on magnite with this uh high volume note it bounced right off of but good support down to about 32 33 or so and then another good support level down at 30 uh, before we see any further downside but really a lot of volume here on on magnite uh for a potential you know buy the dip uh, especially with the aileron kind of tapping out here on an oversold condition so um but again that's a tough one to hold on to when you're moving from uh, from 62 down to 36. That one hurts. Editas. Some of these bio stocks, really tough to, even from a technical perspective, while they're they're good to play, they really kind of depend on, you know, the product that they're pushing out and they move fast. So I find these, for me at least, I find them difficult to to work with. Um, but certainly you have this consolidation zone that we saw, really long consolidation pattern that we saw back from uh, 2020 that will continue to be a, a support line area uh, going forward. But uh, at this point in time, you know we're seeing this long-term downtrend here from way up at 97 down to, down to 40. So you know, you're trying to catch that falling knife, which is difficult. Um, and it may not shake out anytime soon, but going to be a volatile position. Any others that we're seeing out there? I'm not sure if I didn't touch on anything that people wanted to see or not see. But um, but yeah, these, these themes are really going to be this this tech. I mean, there's a, there's been a mass exodus out of some of these tech these tech companies, and and a move maybe toward these. Um, these cyclicals or value trades over discretionary type positions. So, 
you know, really watch that for potentially to be the theme, even though uh, growth has really taken that stronghold over the past 10 years. And you hate to say this time is different, but at some point in time, it might be the case. So let's take a look and, uh, and, and watch it going forward. But have a great day, everyone. And um, glad to be back and uh, look forward to, uh, to helping you guys out.